So let's start our look at the Breeders' Cup races with the Juvenile Turf Sprint. It's grade one. It's going to be run at five furlongs at on the turf, of course, on Friday's card. And what we're going to do here is, incidentally, those of you who watched uh, the videos we posted last year for the Breeders' Cup, we're going to take a look at all the contestants uh, who ran in the Breeders' Cup preps, the, the pertinent ones. And so we'll look at them, and then we'll run the race and take a look at it and evaluate it from there. So we'll start with uh, just taking a look at the field. And you see there's quite a few entrants. Of course, we don't know who's coming over from Europe and who's uh, who's going to stay, stay put. Uh, I think it's a pretty good bet that Ikoro Sieg from Japan will be coming over. Uh, the Japanese, I think, are going to be very prominent at this year's Breeders' Cup uh, being in California. Uh, you got quite a few American entrants. They're the ones who don't have a uh, country by them, obviously. And uh, you'll see most of, uh, we've got quite a few from the UK and Ireland. Um, most notably, Shareholder, who won the Norfolk Stakes uh, at Royal Ascot. And uh, Asterius, who looks to be a pretty promising uh, colt as well. And uh, Celandine, who's, uh, or I hope that's the way you pronounce it, you never know. But uh, uh, those ones look pretty good. And, have, uh, and then we've got the usual American contestants, uh, like Governor Sam is one who looks uh, pretty promising as well. So the first uh, grouping we're going to look at ran in the Futurity at Belmont at Aqueduct, and we'll start with Menti. Uh, obviously, he's the full brother to Fierceness, so he bears uh, bears noting. Uh, City of Light by, uh, with Nona Bella by Stay Thirsty. Um, Rapoli Stables, you know, the usual Breeders' Cup connections. Mike Rapoli, Todd Pletcher, Johnny V. And uh, he's got two starts. Menti is interesting because he, he had that really... Uh, uh, that impressive maiden win that at Saratoga, they got a lot of people pretty excited about him, but did not follow that up with a good hopeful. And now they moved him to turf. So it's uh, kind of interesting from that perspective that they wouldn't uh, persist on dirt. Uh, nonetheless, this horse still has some ability. It's been demonstrated, so we'll see how he does. Gate Wire uh, is by Munnings, who's always... Uh, an excellent sprint sire, and uh, Donegal Racing, always a po potent uh, ownership outfit, and Ty Pletcher, Rod Ortiz, what more do you want? Gate to Wire was second in the Futurity. And thirdly, we have Epitaph, which is a rather interesting name for a horse. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know about that one, but uh, by Country House, and uh, if you remember, Country House won the Derby by DQ when Maximum Security was disqualified. And uh, he's a horse who, you know, he had a lot of talent, but he was a rather mercurial. And uh, Bill Mott had his hands full for sure, but obviously got the most out of him if he won the Derby. Trained by Gary Contessa, uh, who was pretty good with two-year-olds last year, winning the uh, Schuylerville and the, the Hopeful, both with long shots and uh, Junior Alvarado in the Irons. So those are the three that went one, two, three in the Futurity. So now let's take a look at that race. Okay, so here's the Futurity stakes at Belmont. It's really important to note that this is a six furlong turf race, whereas the Juvenile Turf Sprint will be five furlongs. And if you remember last year, one of the uh, big surprises in the race was Valiant Force. Uh, at big, big odds, who got up for second, he was flying late. Um, and the reason I mention that is that the, when they tried to stretch him out in his second start to six furlongs over in Europe, I didn't fare terribly well. But when they put him back to five, obviously, he was uh, much more effective. So uh, this is uh, really important to note. Uh, that, you know, some horses are really good at six furlongs, some are good at five. So if you know watching this race, uh, you want to take that and keep that in mind when you're watching how these contenders move forward. So we'll take a look at it here. Let me just adjust the volume a little bit. Charity. Now we've got uh, Menti is number seven. 
Gates and of Wire is number one, draw. and Epitaph is Mente number two. And you with see Epitaph speed, and in between horses, uh, with very keen Epitaph. out of the Epitaph. gate Epitaph. to get now up to the lead. by a full length and a half. Mente is going right to sit right there in second. behind and slow uh, the pace down Gates up front. was good out of the so gate, and yet that's Joey Muscle back a little bit across the course. In behind them, that's Gate to Wire, who's tucked in at the rail, is in the fourth uh, position, is now sharing that spot with under his radar. In my opinion, the two uh, at the back the in the chase, race that and be I'm it. Otter here. They get set to move into the far turn, 22.38 for the opening quarter mile. They're very tightly bunched, and Epitaph has be, got the lead. You know, Epitaph is in front, is only okay up by a neck as Menti starts to move in closer. Now here's some room for Under Who's Radar. Under Who's Radar has made a three-wide run. Following that move is going to be Gate to Wire from off the pace. They reach the top of the lane in the Futurity. Still there is Epitaph. Menti with yep, every Epitaph shot to run by. And game, now Menti is know, trying to move to right past furlongs. Epitaph, might, who's uh, very game towards the inside. Him, inside the final Menti. furlong. Menti is now striding away. Is up by a length and a half. A 16th left to go. Game. No doubt. Breeders' Cup winning your end. Menti! Wins the Futurity. You see Gate Menti to Wire, bro, came a photo. rally and get up for Gate second. Gate to Wire, but, late uh, rally there again, with that's Epitaph. Six furlongs. In one minute, so, eight. Uh, and four. Interesting race. Uh, we'll see how they do. The next group are, uh, we do have three who ran in the Norfolk Stakes at Royal Ascot, and I believe that was a win in your in uh, for the Breeders' Cup. And we'll start with Shareholder. Uh, who's by not this time, and what a sire he is. He's just, uh, you know, they can run on anything, dirt, turf, it doesn't matter. Uh, Watnam Racing, who uh, who has Asterius as well, um, it, uh, trained by uh, Richard Burke and uh, James Doyle, of course, a pretty prominent jockey. Um, the interesting thing about Shareholder is he won the Norfolk Stakes and then followed it up in the pre-morning with a pretty dismal effort, and... Uh, that was in France, though, and the ground tends to be a little on the heavy side uh, for French races. The Norfolk Stakes at the time at Royal Ascot was uh, the track was was pretty firm uh, by European standards, and uh, we really liked Shareholder that day, and uh, he certainly delivered. Next is Arizona Blaze, and he's for Amo Racing. Uh, he's a you'll you'll note their silks. He's got a soccer ball in the. Uh, the middle of them in, in the purple and white. He's had quite a few come over to the States. Uh, that outfit is uh, owned by an agent uh, who's an agent for a lot of uh, prominent soccer players over in Europe, so hence the uh, soccer ball. But uh, he's a little ambitious sometimes, and of course he had the ill-fated New York Thunder last year, and uh, that was uh, quite a shame. I was at the race at Saratoga when he broke down and that that really was not fun to watch but uh anyway this this is a horse that since um having a couple of wins prior to the Norfolk Stakes he's run several times he's got eight starts as you can see and he seems to be mired in finishing third and fourth um so this is one that uh that again um it, you know kind of a wild card and uh but he seems to have leveled off as far as progression goes so let's take a look at the Norfolk Stakes. So here's the Norfolk Stakes, and um, it, it is awful hard sometimes to tell in these big fields where horses are, but uh, Arizona Blaze, this one will split off into two different groups, and I, I'm going to stop it real quick so you can get a look at where they are uh, out of the gate, and then we'll proceed. Okay, so shareholder here is in... Uh, He's the third in from the left side in the red cap. And then Arizona Blaze is all the way in the 14 hole on the outside. And you'll see them split and up. They're off, racing away five furlongs in front you of see them both of them the weren't uh, more okay out of the Heaven gate, Arm but not the really sharp. To show over toward the far side in turquoise and silver. With plenty of speed towards the near side is Whistle see, of course, it's, it's a straightaway. It is and a little bit of undulation in it. Wide apart the disputing pair. Over on the far you side, see Arizona Blaze all by himself all the way on the right there and Shareholder on the left-hand group down the center, just tucking in. Loom. Then the orange sleeves and cap for Blinky moving force. The one who's racing a solo up the stand side is Arizona Blaze. The Asterius, I believe, is in the middle. He normally is in the Watman well. racing there, silks like Shareholder, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know which one he is, but I believe he's in the middle of the group there. Moving through now to challenge tropical storm. You see shareholder just uh, kicking away. Whistle jacket and but uh, 
an awful game. I think that was Tropical Thunder, Tropical Storm. And you see a uh, Arizona Blaze just staying on the rail, closing pretty well. It's shareholder to win the Norfolk. Shareholder in front, tight there for second. Whistle Jacket, Arizona Blaze, Tropical Storm. The Whistle Jacket was a highly thought of force. He was the favorite in the race, and uh, I didn't like him. And, and you force. see, he didn't. Uh, Fair, terribly well. The rising superpower in horse racing. What? Nan racing. Shareholder. So you can kind of see what Arizona Blaze's problem Jamie. is. He maybe James gets going Doyle a little too right. late uh, to be effective, but uh, we'll see. Our next grouping are uh, horses who ran in the Flying Childers Stakes at Doncaster. And we start with Asterius, who we just saw in the. Um, uh, the Norfolk Stakes, but uh, that was of his six starts, the only one where he didn't finish either first or second. He's got four wins and a second, so this is a pretty good one. Uh, Archie Watson's the trainer and uh, Wathman Racing, the same outfit that owns Shareholder. So uh, they're loaded for bear if they bring both of them there. Uh, this is one that certainly has uh, been making some noise and uh, probably is going to be uh, pretty prominent in the Breeders' Cup if he comes over. Big Mojo uh, is by uh, Mamus. You see uh, that also the sire of, uh, I believe it is it, uh, Asterius. So, uh, so well well accounted for. And uh, this is one uh, trained by Michael Appleby. Uh, I'm not sure of his relation to Charlie, but uh, this one's had three uh, in the money finishes out of four and had a pretty good second in the Flying Childers, as we'll see. And the third one is Magnum Force. Great name. Uh, Clint Eastwood, you got to love that. Uh, and uh, this one is, I'm sorry, Magnum Force is also by Mamus. So you have a couple of half brothers in this race. And Fastnet Rock is the dam sire. And you may remember that name because Fastnet Rock was the dam sire of Just Steel, who was on the Derby Trail uh, for the coach, D. Wayne Lucas. So we had uh, three here. And this was a, a pretty good race, and um, uh, this one it looks to me like it might have some bearing on the Breeders' Cup. We'll see how many of them come over. So let's take a look at the Flying Childers Stakes. So this is the Flying Childers Stakes from Doncaster, and we're going to, uh, again, I'm going to stop it real quick so we can get a look at where the horses are. But uh, Asterius is down uh, on the uh, far right here in the red cap, and uh, you can't miss... Um, Magnum, um, um, not Magnum Force, but the, the other one, uh, <laughs> who, uh, who has a, uh, he has a, a shadow roll, uh, a big white one on his, uh, keep an eye on her. She's nose. coming out of stall eight. There's Asterius right Lined there. Lined up, set, and racing. A Moorland broke, well, she didn't break the best, but she's away. For the Carlsberg Danish Pilsner Flying Children's Stakes over the straight five. Group of three on the far side, King's Call, Tropical Storm, and Make Haste. On the near side, Asterius. A leading from Big Mojo and Ain't Nobody. Big Mojo. And the group in the center converging is, uh, the with the group on the, the far side. Uh, Mr. Lightside from uh, Isaiah the right roll. up there. Magnum the Force thickness. covered up behind them. And more lamb in the dark blue jacket and noseband as they blaze down Magnum past Force the halfway in point the, yeah. in the Flying Childers. Tropical Storm the down the center with a narrow advantage from Mr. Lightside. Asterius the on the near there. side is driven hard, going pretty nicely in the sheepskin noseband. There is Big Mojo. Magnum Force is coming there strongly. So too Zare on the far side. And here comes Tropical Storm on the far really side. Asterius rallying really on the near really side in a wide open see. flying Childers. They come inside the, the final there. half furlong. And it's Big Mojo on the far That's side from Asterius on the near side. Asterius beginning to get up. Asterius really won the well flying Childers. Big Mojo and, uh, and Magnum Force back in third and a blanket one, for fourth. Uh, they all look pretty good. So that, that's a race uh, that's worth noting for sure. Next group are a couple that ran in the Speakeasy Stakes out at Santa Anita. And, uh, of course, West Coast horses want to pay a little bit more attention to because they do have the home court advantage. Didn't work out too well for them in the Breeders' Cup last year, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you see Pally Kitten is by Vina Rosso, and uh, I do wonder about this one probably being more effective with more ground, certainly with Kitten's Joy underneath. That's what they bred this horse for, and yet uh, running in a sprint. you got Kazushi Kimura aboard for Doug O'Neill, and uh, Doug O'Neill can be dangerous at times. You see, uh, Pally Kitten's got a couple of wins out of three starts. And so uh, we'll see. The other was uh, Smash It, 
who is by Star Guitar. So uh, Louisiana influence there. He's just a, a monster sire. Uh, at, you see him at the fairgrounds every year. He's get always uh, do really well. Todd Fincher, trainer uh, out of New Mexico and uh, the West of uh, Los Alamitos uh, quite a bit. And uh, he's a... Uh, He's been pretty good. Uh, he had Senior Buscador take down the uh, <laughs> take down the Dubai World Cup. You can't get much better than that. You do see that this one has four seconds in five starts, and that is always a little alarming to me. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at the speakeasy. Okay, so here's the Louther Stakes, and Dean is in the blue and white, and we'll go right to the All lead. All set here this then for the six Sky Bet Louther Stakes. Race, Away they go, six noted. furlongs ahead of them for right this in the very smart-looking field and here. White. And it's and that's the early pace coming right from Selendine down the center the, uh, in the dark blue Michael colors. Heaven's Gate so flanking her. Uh, taking a bit of a grip in the gray jacket, Unspoken Love. On the right, we can see Tales of the Heart in the pink and green, who's right up there with the pace as well. Miss Lamine near side, Heaven's Gate behind. Covered up there, Leovani in the red cap. Also, time for Sandals well. written so patiently, again, as indeed is Betty Clover, the gray filly. Perfect pass in the brown jacket, a little bit outpaced as the runners come down towards the halfway point of the contest. Selendine and Tom Marcon from on the near side, Miss Lamai and Clifford Lee. On the outside there, Tales of the Heart, Ross Orion now shaken up. Heaven's Gate is coming into it. On the left, then here comes Leovani under James Doyle. Is now looks a big threat. This is a really open-looking Lowther Stakes inside the final so furlong. They come. Heaven's finish. Gate challenging Selendine for the lead with Leovani on the near side. Selendine digging deep. Behind them, time for Sandals is running on. He's Selendine then the in really irresistible form with a challenge from time for Sandals. And well, Selendine held done. on and made all the rain to win the Lowther. Time for Sandals second. Back in third place then. Uh, was Leovani. Dash Dizzy is another UK import potentially, and you see he's by Wooten Bassett, who's uh, another awesome sire. Uh, did very well, and I believe his freshman crop was last year. Uh, trained by Charlie Johnston, uh, who's usually uh, can throw one in there on occasion at Ascot, uh, and Tom Mark wanted to be the jockey, so another thing to look at is let's see which one he chooses. This one has, uh, has been in the money in all three starts. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the Middle Park Stakes, where uh, he had to deal with Shadow of Light, who's a, a real monster, as well as Whistle Jacket. So it was a pretty good field as well. So here's the Middle Park Stakes, and you're going to see Dash Dizzy go right to the lead, so it won't be hard well, to spot. They're all in. They're ready. Set. They're off. Uh, the group watch up on middle part stakes. Six furlongs ahead there. of them. Dash Dizzy Going in the light blue. Got out swiftly. The, uh, Immediately gets company from yellow. Whistle Jacket. Ryan Moore in the shades of green. Uh, then Defence Minister with a red cap moving up to dispute second as Jancy Pink Cap is taken back this into fourth. The nose banded uh, Colt. So Over so on the far Mark, side of the group, Black Forts are in the red and black is racing in rear. And on the right, Shadow of Light is held up in the slipstream of Whistle Jacket as they track center of the Roly Mile down to halfway in the middle park. Dash Dizzy over Whistle Jacket now breezing alongside. Uh, the nose bounded Jancy up between them. Shadow of Light on the right, finessed into it. Defense Minister on the left, Black Forts as last of all. Downhill to the last couple of furlongs, and Shadow of Light is now moving through to Dash Dizzy. Whistle Jacket under the more drive, see, pitching there between horses. And then Defense Minister Dash deep Dizzy inside the last furlong because, they come. Uh, Shadow of light quickens no up impressively. Stretches on here, moves three lengths clear. They're chasing shadows in behind. Shadow of light is away and gone. An emphatic winner of the Judd Park Middle, Judmont Middle Park. Up for second, Wessel Jacket. Close for third between Black Forza and Dash Dizzy. The Koro Sieg is the Japanese import, and I'm going to expect that he'll be running for sure. Uh, the Japanese are going to have a pretty big contingent, I'm guessing. Uh, being at Del Mar. Uh, this one's by Twirling Candy. Uh, should be no surprise. I always love Twirling Candies, uh, especially at sprints. Uh, they're just always game. Uh, trained by Hideyuki Mori and Christophe Lemaire at the jockey. I believe it was the jockey on Derma Sodagaki last year. Uh, he's known for being pretty aggressive. So you'd expect this one to be on the front uh, end. He's two for two so far. Just won the can of stakes. I was not able to get a uh, replay of the, of the canna, so we'll, we'll uh, just uh, 
hopefully something will become apparent uh, as we go along. And if so, I'll certainly provide it for you. The next ones we're going to look at are ones that um, uh, that ran in the uh, at Caneland in the um, oh good God I can't remember the name it'll come to me in a second but the Chasing Liberty is the first one uh, trained by Rob Atras uh, with Florent Giroux aboard uh, by Constitution and Declaration of War underneath so you, you wonder if this one's not going to be looking at two turns later on maybe see him on the Derby Trail. The next is Governor Sam, and he's trained by George Weaver, who has done very well with turf sprint, so not to be underestimated. Uh, ran in the Indian Summer Stakes and won it, and that's the one we're going to take a look at. Uh, we've got Paco Lopez aboard, so expect this one to be aggressively placed early by Improbable in his freshman class. And this one's four out of five so far, so one we definitely want to be paying attention to. So let's have a look at the Indian Summer Stakes. So here's the Indian Summer Stakes, and Governor Sam is in the seven hole, and Chasing Liberty is in the two hole. They're off at the Indian Summer, presented Chasing by Liberty, Keeneland Celebs. The right there goes the Bad Gal Party out for the early lead. Governor Sam Governor right there Sam in the opening right stride, suppressed the issue as well. Floodlights comes away in third. GW's girl is fourth. The Jet Sweet Joe goes fifth. First and Raise the bar, year. center of the course. Moves up into the sixth position within five lengths of the lead. Pharaoh's Dynasty is in seventh. Out on bail is eighth. Just keep looking ninth. Moon Sniper tenth. Fiddling Felix eleventh. Chasing Liberty. Last of the 12, 20.81 seconds. The Jason time Liberty for the had opening quarter. Floodlights draws alongside so, uh, Governor Sam, who uh, still has the lead by a neck against the rail. She's a, a quarter more, mile to go. Uh, a gap of know, four more lengths then. Back to Bad Gal Party, who's toward but, uh, the inside as they straighten away for home. Here comes Floodlights after Governor Sam out on bail. Goes to third, still six lengths Governor away. Sam really Governor gained. Sam fighting on. Floodlights is there. Out on bail to third. GW's girl chasing Liberty is fifth and still seven lengths back governor sam in front out on bail the final try governor sam wins the indian summer presented by keeneland select and there Chase it Liberty is career win late. number four thousand for jockey paco lopez the last one we're going to take a look at is gabaldon and he's by gone astray and valuable miss uh Value plus, so some sprint influence there. Trained by Jose D'Angelo, who's uh, had a nice year. And uh, Emisil Yaramillo, uh, for Gulfstream jockey, and uh, very big, good with horses out on the front end. And you're going to see that here. Uh, interesting to note that uh, Gabaldon won the Royal Palm Juvenile, and that was the prep race for uh, Royal Ascot for Crimson Advocate who won uh, a, st a sprint at uh, Ascot last year. So uh, it looked like a really good path because uh, Gabaldon ran a really nice race in the Windsor Castle, which we're about to take a look at. And uh, who knows, this may be a sleeper. Now, this is the Windsor Castle stakes, and you can see <laughs> it's a pretty full field. Uh, all 28 uh, loaded up here. Now, this would normally be kind of tough to find Gabaldon, but you know, it's going to be pretty easy because he's right on the rail and uh, he's prominent right from the beginning. They're off. The Windsor Castle stakes five the rails rail, ahead of him. Rudy's pair getting out under the stands. Right up to the lead. Eight nobody in the grey garb. Greg. Over on the left hand side, the grey Fuji Mountain is showing early speed with end of story in a yellow jacket. Cheval de Guerre on the extreme really left of that group. So Beal Road is up there as well with Honorary American and Vanguard in the green and white hoops. And then Hawaiian and Reposado from Artanian and Sensori. Shadow Army is in the left hand cluster. Gold Sleeves with the red cap. Calixo and Celtic Chieftain and Trent. Treasure Isle are also in that group with Rock and Roll Rocket. Meanwhile, across on the right-hand side, it's the Grey Garveldon, who's burst clear under the stands rail of his group from Ain't Nobody and Rudy's Pet, and then Sir Yacht, and then Aviation Time, and He's further back to Pop good Earth. They're already point. down towards the last furlong, and it's Garveldon in front. Ain't Nobody is giving chase with Aviation Time. Down the centre, staying on Carl Colston from off the pace, but as they come deep inside the last furlong, Ain't it. Nobody has to be to take over. Race. It's Ain't Nobody Everybody wins the Windsor Castle from Garford and Aviation Time in a tight call for second. And they were followed home by Wise Muller, who was never nearer. And in behind, the likes of Vanguard. 
So those, that's the Juvenile Turf Sprint, and I hope this helps you with your preparations for the Breeders' Cup. We're going to do this for all 14 races, and uh, so be on the lookout for that. And, you know, please like and subscribe. Uh, do us a favor. We really appreciate it, and uh, it does uh, help us continue to provide content for you. So that's it from here. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.